Oh, it started. Okay. Oops. <laughs> I thought I was just turning up the volume. I didn't know it was going to turn the camera on. <clears throat> okay, so I guess we're started. Please look at some signs before I start talking. Okay. <clears throat> so, um, a little talking before I get to cards, but I did pull some cards. And the thing that I want to talk about is, um, well, it's a number of things, actually. <laughs> so let me try to find somewhere to start. So I'm in a very uh, strange mood. Um, like, I could be in a really terrible one, like a sad or angry one. But I'm just not going to do that um, because those <laughs> could be premature and when they have been, it's often a mistake. Let's just say there's a situation in flux that I could potentially have reason to feel some kind of way about. <laughs> and... Um, <clears throat> Part of the reason why the situation has the potential for that <clears throat> is, is a it already has caused some of that to happen, some of that to happen, uh, and uh, the other thing is if you've been like. Uh, following sort of the spiritual stuff and know about like the long view sort of program that humanity has been going through for a long time and if you know that then the places or people that you would have heard it from will be like beyond the bible or like you're traditional re religious studies it goes into the more sort of spiritual areas that are kind of taboo in in that uh, area although if you get <clears throat> deep into scholarship in any religion you will I think come into contact with the more supernatural aspects of things so these days, you don't have to do all of that, thankfully. It would be helpful to have mystery school knowledge, especially for those of us who are aware of it and what the lessons would, what the curriculum would be and what advantages there would be to study these things because, a lot of reasons because. You have to figure that out yourself or I'll talk about it more at length over a, p a lengthy period of time I'm not gonna give a whole like lecture on that you can't let's just like focus on one thing and not have to get sidetracked trying to explain it by including a bunch of ancillary things other and it just becomes too long and confusing a discussion for me to stay focused on and to make sense to a listener, viewer, whatever. So, <clears throat> however, these days you, like, you don't have access necessarily to a mystery school. And I say necessarily because I, there are some out there. You just have to know where to look for them and they might go under a different name. But a lot of the information is accessible so you don't necessarily have to go to an institution however that is constituted these days where that type of esoterica is taught so <clears throat> here and there I get bits and pieces and because the subject is so wide I feel like I just like landed in the middle and have had to sort of 
fill in the edges ahead and behind of where I started at all on my own, which is fine. And I think it is actually the most efficient way to learn and retain the stuff um, is to find it yourself and let your own curiosity lead it lead you to it because you're giving yourself permission and access to seek out and absorb this information and I just think it's a better way to learn stuff than and I'm not saying a mystery school is like that but I'm saying all of the schools that I've ever attended on this side of the screen here that's probably the same on other sides of screens elsewhere you know school it doesn't it, it doesn't equip you with esoterica that is for sure in fact it, if anything it wants to dissuade you from becoming aware of that type of stuff and make it unreal and magical and fantasy and and that works i think in a lot of ways because while that stuff is all there it's like the it takes faith and belief uh not for it to exist but for us to be able to perceive it and so that is also something that is not encouraged any kind of altered state from basically what what um Oh, I don't know, whatever the deep state or whoever wants the programming to be. And I think if, in a general sense, it is to like control the masses, just to like keep us occupied, keep us dull. You know, go ahead and have your, <clears throat> uh, like your cigarettes and your terrible food and you know, don't be able to be as bright and intelligent as you might be because <laughs> your brain's got Cheeto fat in the creases or whatever. Or, you know, alcohol is fine. Cigarettes, yeah, they're terrible. And not just for your health, just for the general health of society. Once all the bad health people have to hit the health care system and it's you know, all this stuff. It's like trying to just trying to explain the other thing I didn't want to go into and try to explain. But these things, at least, you know, like healthcare and how it works and doesn't work and how, for example, in this country, many products that we can ingest in other ways, consume and, you know, get inside of our bodies or in some other way uh, partake of in other countries you can't have them they're banned you, you it's not allowed they don't allow their people these other countries they don't allow their people to have access to them so they don't get sick or injured from consumption of said product so I, I feel kind of cheated by that information like, hey, my country, why don't you care about me that much? And, but, you know, <laughs> I recently learned um, from watching Last Week Tonight with John Oliver why that might be is because um, I'm doing the thing I didn't want to do. But real quick, because corporations have so much influence be because money over politics and advertising and like everything that money can be thrown at to influence <clears throat> opinion commentary I think that those controlling influences and forces have better and easier access to better stuff and better health care and don't necessarily ever have to consume or ingest the stuff that everybody else does that doesn't have the money to not live in a place with polluted water or made with polluted building products or have polluting black mold growing in it 
or the restaurant have, uh, it's just, uh, corners are cut so money can be made and there's little concern, I feel like, a lot of times for the people that are expected to consume it, ingest it, create it, deal with it, con transport it, package it, like, every step along the way, everybody that has to deal with this stuff kind of gets the the sick end of the stick, the bad end of the stick. And why is that happening? Because money is more important. Like, just always having, getting more and more and more. Like, addiction, fat people, oh, they hate that. But, you know, that money grubbing, that's just fine. <laughs> that's not a psychological issue. Having more than everybody else, having... Make, having control over it, making sure that other people don't have it as good or at all <laughs> is like enjoyable that from my you know unaccredited perspective is sick in the head <laughs> that's not it's not cool man <laughs> what the hell um and so uh i think about these things and and then I think uh, oh yeah role playing <laughs> remember this is our life we're living in yes we are for real living it if you poke me will I not bleed yes I will oh my god and your bones will really break like you are actually feeling that I can testify to that but that's how we made it the we of us that is not this, <laughs> really. That's more like a <laughs> than anything. A little electrical sort of situation <laughs> that, for the most part, is not visible to us human beings. Just regular old humans. Not necessarily overly endowed with the ability to see like auras and things <laughs> like that. You might excel so, oh, sensorily in other ways. Did I let the cat in? I think I did. <clears throat> anyway, um, and for that, us, that other self, um, the whole here, being, and doing right now, we meant to do that. <laughs> that is, that was the intention. This is the intention to all of it, whatever it is, you name it, all of it is supposed to be, you know, and <laughs> even like me sitting here going, why are we like this? Or, I mean, like, I know why. I mean, I don't know, like, the actual motivations of people, but. I know that for every me, <laughs> there is an equal and opposite me somewhere, so to speak. Um, I don't even know what to call what I just did there, but um, <clears throat> just trying to make what I'm saying a little more clear. So, um, got all the way sidetracked. I didn't want to do that. What is my time like? Okay. Anyway. You find yourself, if you get into this spiritual stuff, learning all kinds of interesting things, like about this ascension that we have just been going through, like, since humanity ever. <laughs> like, waiting for us to catch on to something, catch on to the fact that there's something to catch on to, basically. <laughs> and <clears throat> that is, it is said, the road to... Uh, remembering those things that we forgot so that we can fully immerse ourselves in this experience. So, um, one of the things that, sorry, <laughs> I didn't mean to go blank there. One of the things that, um, I have heard over the years since I've been sort of studying this stuff so since 2014 about <clears throat> is when I got interested in all of this and the thing that I've heard over and over is is that once this stuff gets rolling like when the sh shift starts to be able to happen when 
people are awakening to, like I said, to the fact that there's something to awaken to um, that will create a, it's going to change stuff, change in um, the atmosphere, change in reality, basically. And so, um, strange stuff, you're going to see some strange stuff, and an example of that would be your Mandela effect, right? I'm not saying that it doesn't if, doesn't exist. Like I, I have taken issue, I guess you could say, with the whole Berenstein versus Berenstain thing. But someone else talking about it also felt the same way as I do. That sometimes we kind of want things to be that more than they actually are, and that in turn can create. This person didn't say this part. I'm going to say right now, but I feel like. The desire for that, driven by enough people, can in turn create another reality where it is the case. So, um, <clears throat> with the Bernstein Bears, the Bernstein, <laughs> the Bernstein Bears, when um, I was a kid in the 1970s, I had that book, or those books, I think there was a few of them, and, uh, like I said, I at the time there was at least one for God. What is the famous person whose last name was Bernstein? And um, it was a, it just seems like it was a common name uh, where I was growing up. Which there was in Los Angeles, there are a lot of Jewish people there, and I, there's a lot of Jewish people all over the place. I just don't know how well integrated they are but where I grew up I mean it, <laughs> most of my friends from childhood are Jews most <laughs> like that's how it was so I guess I heard that kind of name a lot like Steen at the end of a name or Stein even <clears throat> which was even another confusing thing when you're younger and I mean this was before I got older and accumulated all these friends but it was the names were still in the air and so, um, had the books, and I would be saying it and confusing it, and, like, the thing that would happen is that I would say it wrong, and then know that the book is right there on the shelf saying something different, and I was constantly having to correct myself. I still, I think now I finally have just gone with Baron Stain, but it's taken, like, a major chunk of my life to where I could let go of the other one. So like I said, um, you're going to see some strange stuff and among those strange things could be enough people deciding that like, <laughs> what's his name? Sinbad really was in Shazam when I think it was Shazil. 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 <laughs> Shaquille O'Neal, I think it was the genie, Kazam, Shazam, something like that, whatever it was. And Sinbad's name is close enough to a genie that I think that that's a natural thing that, like, if your mind is automatic, on automatic, rather, it would just, like... Like, spell check, you know how it fills in? Like, I think that's what happened with a lot of us. E me too, by the way. <laughs> also, my confusion until I saw Sinbad saying it enough times, couldn't find a trailer with him in it doing it, and then was also concurrently aware of Shaquille O'Neal having done some kind of genie movie, so... Just more like floating bits of that'll work there or pull that in, that might work. Like we can so easily just do like we could do it. I know that we do do it. It's like scientifically proven that we will fill in what we think needs to be there. Like we'll tell us what we think we want to hear basically. But <laughs> enough people thinking and deciding that something is fact, again, could possibly create a parallel timeline. So, 
it's crazy and and people have seen stuff like timeline glitch stuff there are people that have filmed things and so I mean just person out on the street with a camera phone type stuff that gets put up on YouTube and um, I'm just saying, like, you could see some weird stuff and it could happen in your life. So, um, I, I am experiencing some things that I'm having a lot of difficulty distinguishing, like, exactly what's going on. And, like, I can tell some of it is just like, uh-uh, and some of it is okay, and other stuff... <clears throat> I just need more information, and I'm having to wait. <laughs> I'm having to wait to like, get the answers to things, and I'm terrible at that. I don't know when I turned into such a secret squirrel, but I gotta know. I <laughs> I must have answers. And um, you know, I am always amazed at how much can be going on in my life when I feel like there's nothing going on. Um, and I think probably other people, um, if they're open to experiencing things, which also makes a difference uh, in your perception. So other people with maybe not my outlook on things and my sort of okayness or openness to these other things being fully real <laughs> might be having a harder time with stuff that is hard to see and hard to understand and just like again I ain't never seen no shit like that before level of oddness <laughs> so um I think it's fun <laughs> Uh, and, you know, I can talk all I want about uh, all of these sort of uh, philosophies and skills and things that I've been picking up and learning, but I have not been doing them for a lifetime. <laughs> but all of my other stuff that's kind of either hardwired or so habitual, it's nearly the same thing is a lot harder to unglue and also adhere to. Uh, so it's always kind of like a fake it till you make it situation, I feel like, with me. And I, I actually, what I just said, considered, I think I do okay, you know. Um, it's hard to assess your own what, what you're doing behavior yourself without like a camera rolling on you all the time which which I don't have um yet <laughs> but um I mean you do the best you can and then also we're really hard on ourselves too so that makes the self-assessment even more stilted you know like I I I feel like I'm not as hard on myself as other people are. <laughs> if I were, I'd, I'd be living in better, uh, better living circumstances. <laughs> but, um, you know, what you put into it, you're going to get, basically. So I also have to live with that. And I don't know how that got way over there. Get off of that. I think what I was getting at, <laughs> though, is... Um, if stuff unusual is happening, stuff looks strange, I can't even begin to tell you what that would be for an individual. It's going to be subject subjective and completely up to you, but um, they were talking about it for so long, and it's happening to me, so I can't believe it's not happening to other people where stuff in just your regular day-to-day -day life is just hard to, to believe. Like, is this really happening right now? And if it isn't happening yet, look out for it. I, 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 I'm pretty sure <laughs> you're going to see something. Uh, <clears throat> so, the cards. Time. I have to, my face is so yellow and bright. Okay, good on time. So, I pulled one card from the Shaman's Dream Oracle deck. My friend. And, uh... 
it is the Lay of the Land card, and the subtitle is Ancestral Wisdom. Hmm. So I said all that stuff at the end there, or not at the end, I don't know, the previous, before I start talking about cards, about uh, it not being, like, learning stuff, but it might take more than it's, than I've been trying to put it into practice for things to work that I've been learning. Let me make sure and finish that thought. <laughs> I try to apply them whenever possible, and just lately, I know I've talked about this before, but could be someone new watching sometimes I don't I don't I'm not successful <laughs> like the stuff will happen and like you like, uh, getting like over excited about something or or getting angry too fast without like employing any type of you know preventive measure like to de-escalate I have not been as successful as that at that as I would like. Some some areas, yes. Others, not so much at all, <laughs> really. And <clears throat> that's I would like to do better. So that is what the the point of what I was saying. Like I'm saying all this stuff, and I I am t also talking about me. I'm not like I'm really not on here to be all yeah do this because. Who the hell am I <laughs> really am? This is as much for me as it is for anyone looking on here. So this here, this is my affirmations. I don't like to say them. I mean, I don't know. I don't want to get into that, but you can affirmations, spiritual affirmations, look it up. You want to do them? Decide for yourself. You don't want to do them? That's your deal. I feel like there's... Um, I'm, the, I, I'm not. I'm not going to say the reason why I don't want to do them because I can articulate that. I don't know what that is. Maybe it's just because you have to do something over and over because somebody told you to, which that makes total sense to me. This is me telling me, like, okay, remember to do this. These things. Remember these things. Or this is something I really believe in, like the laughing part. <clears throat> like that is something that really works for me. So. That is something I'm sharing with you. I'm going to say, you have to do it. Laugh, damn it. <laughs> That's not how laughter works. So, uh, ow. Oh, my God, ow. <laughs> Shoot, that hurt. So, anyway, uh, I pulled that lay of the land card. And then the other card I pulled is from the Wild Unknown Animal Spirit deck. And it's... Kind of took that away kind of fast. And uh, the card I pulled is Zebra. So, one thing that I've been kind of stuck on like today, but I mean always, but in particular just watching today's news and <clears throat> it sort of got me thinking about um, how we are treating each other particularly with the news of what the former president would like to do on day one as president I mean as dictator <laughs> I mean it's not, not at all a surprise that he would want to immediately go after all of the media people who hurt his fifis, basically. And, but actually, we're doing something perfectly legal. But, you know, because it's him, you can't do it because he wants to be the leader. Oh, and he wants to be loved, by the way. So he wants to take away the First Amendment right that we've had in this whole... The history of the country that people kind of like and other countries aspire to, he wants to take that away. So, if you're into this guy, that's what he wants to do for to everybody. Because think about the fact that how many people have gotten into legal trouble that he remember they were his friend and 
the best guy and a good fellow and everybody loves them and achievement this and accomplishment that and my cat does not like this conversation <laughs> that are now in legal trouble because of their association with the guy and when things like that change when they go bad he's like they were not loyal he doesn't he didn't know them <laughs> He was going to pay their legal fees. He doesn't do that. He doesn't pay his own legal fees. <clears throat> but that's not stuff that's reported in the sanctioned news of the type that his followers like to watch because he and others like him, the former president I am talking about, tell them their followers don't look at the other news in fact they've been telling you it's fake and you just believe it i guess if you are a like mega person and don't go look which is weird so i mean i think it's weird and so the yeah i pulled the zebra card <clears throat> and well i'm gonna read you what it says in the book first Eccentric, creative, visionary. Zebras are the most precious of gems. They are young at heart, well-cultured, and have an undying curiosity about life. Being in the company of a zebra personality is not only a delight, but also opens our minds. Be prepared. Their potent magic is contagious, and you may soon find yourself in a faraway land, expanding your worldview while having a blast. Zebras also like to contribute to the global health through environmental or volunteer work. This card may be a hint for you to pack your bags. When in balance, worldly, enthusiastic, fashion forward. When out of balance, jaded, pouty, vain. To bring into balance an epic adventure, art. So, I actually wrote a piece earlier before I started doing this that I'm going to upload to uh, WordPress and then I'll link it on this video too. So I'm not going to read it to you because it's like several pages long and I don't feel like reading it right now. But uh, what I really was about is three things that we hear that I felt one way or I felt two ways about them and then later came to sort of appreciate them when in the time that they were said I no matter which of the two ways I felt about it I didn't appreciate hearing it at, at all but I don't think one one was a personal situation but one that others may relate to perhaps and the other two were quotes uh, from public figures and so a lot of people would have heard them and, like I said, might have felt <laughs> similarly uh, as I did, which, if you're interested, uh, you can read, uh, uh, I'll put it in <clears throat> the information box. But more or less, it is about the decline of decorum and my feeling is that it was always there um, the lack of decorum, by which I mean, like, lack of compassion, lack of respect, lack of wanting, lack of generosity as far as equality. Like, you don't, I'm not asking people to give you anything, but the way our system works in this country is we have the taxation, and, um, along the same lines as a private organization like a church or something but you know a church or you know a whole country of churches cannot support the needs of people that <clears throat> can't support themselves and need help and it's like your philosophy or ideology if you're like an Ayn Randian type where you just think people, if you can't like save yourself, you should just die is okay. And then get mad because their corpse can't get up and clean itself out of the street. I hope that that conveys to you how ridiculous a belief system I think that is. Because it's like, 
getting mad at the homeless people for being homeless and then saying that they're all drug and alcohol users and they want to be there and they want to be living this life with like most of the people that they encounter treating them like dirt and scum because they, you know, they've had to live outside and make their way and beg and live rough, they call it in England. And it's like, well, yeah, that is so apt a term for that. And the reason why I'm going into it in such detail is because for so many of us, that could be us tomorrow, you know, in an hour, you find out that your life has just made a rapid turnaround. And so, I don't know, I'm just saying, I try to give those people respect. And if I can, help. And if it's financial, I'll do that. Um, and I'm not concerned with what they decide to then go do with the money. Um, that's not the point of giving it to them. I'm giving it to them because they need help. There's, if you have no money, you need some for whatever you need to do. And they're in most cases grown adults. Like I'm not handing out <laughs> money to <laughs> gags of dirty little street urchins. Those are usually in school. See, they put their kids in school. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I mean, my impulse is to help them, not to put them down, because the, I know what can happen to you. Like, just a series of unfortunate events that kind of, you know, I don't know, wrong place, wrong time, uh, just not something that you necessarily did yourself like you didn't gamble away all your money you know like prices just got higher than your job allowed you to pay and it's interesting that those kind of equations don't seem to make it through the same process that gets in the brain and out of the mouth like oh you're laying all over the sidewalk get out of the way oh you're on drugs oh you're drunk and I always think, yeah, I would be too if I had to listen to that all day. Jesus, I would make myself as unconscious as as possible because not only the right, the righteous people, the people doing all the right things, you got the people that are going to do all of the bad things. And, you know, I, I think even to law enforcement, those people don't they don't want to deal with it they don't want to deal with all the problems that come along with basically human targets that you can't miss as prey basically for at, at, from a predator's standpoint and and then like they get blamed for that for being becoming being victims implies that they want that to happen like they put themselves there to be prey that's not the case like pretty much even insane people I don't think want to just have to be outside in the elements I think what they need is just to be able to come and go as freely as someone who has not got a mental health issue but um the ill people sometimes need other assistance or sometimes they might just need to be outside 24 hours a day for <laughs> six months you gotta you know not they're not thinking on the same uh, wavelength as a sane so called sane people so but I'm just saying there's another layer of that intolerance that um that I wrote about and uh it partly I was talking about how like we have these impulses inside of us that want us to um find fault with other people or we'll have something happen with like a certain person and it'll happen they'll be like a certain race and then maybe forever you will like not like people of those race those people of that person's race and it's like 
the people you meet your whole life are like to blame for something that happened to you so many years ago. They have no, they have no clue. And it's like insane that you would put that on people and be okay with yourself with it. Like, to me, that's, that's a crazy thing to do. <laughs> like, that's a mental health issue. But so many people are like that. It is weird. Um, <clears throat> and, and other ways that we find fault with people to take issue about, with them about. And so many times, words just don't, they fail to be enough for people or something. And we just want to be so violent and hateful in our words. I mean, that's what it seems to be reflecting that's on their minds. Like, you're mad, angry words come out of your mouth. And when you're saying something about people and you wish them ill, the words are like weapons. But with us, it's like the words sometimes are not enough, or we don't even bother to use the words. Like the hate, I'm just going to call it hate, is so there on the surface. It's like waiting to be exercised, not exorcised, but you want to like do some hate on somebody. <clears throat> and. <clears throat> Part of that piece that I wrote addresses that, um, and I feel like there's a reason where I think it was just a like a, a thing that was going to happen anyway. Like we have these waves of peace, and we have these waves of unrest, and one of the things that causes it or becomes awakened by unrest is hate. It's like part of the <laughs> recipe of a bunch of people upset with each other and it just comes out as like just part, it's like built in. And so um, some people of us are enjoying it and some of us are like not enjoying it to the point that we want to protest it happening and when you're out there doing both of those things these days the some people that are in violent disagreement with you will hit you with their car and then some politicians will decide that's an okay thing to do and make it legal that also seems crazy to me. Like, it was some words. Like, the only way <laughs> that the words are going to wound you as bad as, like, inflicting a physical injury on someone is if you let them. My God, you letting somebody get to you so bad that you have to vehicular homicide them? Oh, shoot. Well, anyway, we'll, we'll you know... Anyway, um, my thing is, yeah, words are not going to do those things. They're not going to injure physically, and that's what I would like to see us stay away from, because that's not, that's no way to answer somebody just because they disagree with you that suggests that I don't know, your thought processes are working improperly. Again, unaccredited, but... I don't know. I understand, like, getting so angry that you feel, like, useless, that you can't do anything about it, but maybe that's the whole point. <laughs> you know, like, leave well enough alone, maybe, <laughs> you know? Um... Uh, it's weird, I don't know. Uh, <clears throat> must just be the day it was that that was what I decided I had to talk about. I'm not a fan. Um, anyway, I am done talking now. Thank you and good night.